Hi, it's Alice again. Do you remember how excited I was having exposed Deborah? Well, that hadn't lasted for long. She turned out to be really powerful and asked the principal to kick me out. After that, no good school accepted me and I had to enter the seediest one. Today is my first day in the new class. Just as I entered, a spitted piece of paper hit my head. Ew, how disgusting! I attacked the offender right away, but all the others protected him. Someone shouted that dip me in the toilet now. Oh no, not this! But then a guy entered and ordered everyone to leave me be. He introduced himself as Phil and invited me to his desk. After classes we went for a walk. Phil told me his father was a policeman, so the guys in class were cautious about Phil. They'd moved to this neighborhood recently and not by choice. Well, same here. I was dropped out of school because of this new girl, Deborah. Long story short, I had to tell him everything and to admit I still wanted to expose her. I just feel something is wrong here. Phil offered to go to his place and use his father's working computer. We could check the real owner of the American Tower Corporation in a database. That was the company which owned the mansion where Deborah invited us all to party to. Wow, sure, let's go. In one hour we were checking the database already. And soon we found out that the company was indeed owned by Deborah's father. Is the taxi his too? I was wrong about Deborah and I paid for it. Well, let's go, Phil. Now it's all clear. Just as we headed to the door, his father appeared asking what business did we have with his computer. Damn it! Bad luck! We had to tell him the truth, starting with my school investigation. Mr. Diaz listened to us and then said, This can't be. The fate gives me one more chance. What do you mean? It turned out Phil's dad was a major crimes investigator and was digging into Deborah's father's deeds. But that man avoided the jail and managed to have Mr. Diaz demoted and sent to this volatile area to work as a patrolman. Suddenly Mr. Diaz clenched his fists and said that family must have been exposed. Yes, I'm in! <laughs> to start with, we headed to see Thomas, the guy from another class who was dropped out. You might remember I found his parents' application asking to give his papers as the family was moving elsewhere. Deborah, however, claimed he was dropped out after kicking her back. We need to visit him and find out what had happened. Thomas's parents told us that day they had a call from an unknown person who asked to remove their son from the school. They refused, but soon they were visited by two lugnuts who threatened to finish them off. They were scared and wrote the application. Mr. Diaz said it was a good hint, but it didn't give us anything exact yet, not involving the school principal, although it was clear he initiated it all. We followed him, but it was all in vain. From the outside, everything looked okay. The principal was talking to Deborah as to an ordinary student, and she didn't ask to drop out anyone. Well, it seemed this threat was for nothing. At night, someone knocked on my window. I was terrified. Could those lock nuts find out we were digging into Deborah's family's deeds? I crawled to the window and saw Howard. What are you doing here? He was mighty scared, looking over his shoulder and begging to let him in. Wait, you've put me to the no-fly list and as everyone in the class stopped talking to me after that case. What's changed? Howard was literally shaking in fear. He said last night Deborah invited him to her place. They were playing the console, when suddenly they heard noises from the living room, arguing screams and two shots. Deborah said her parents must have been watching their stupid action movie on the home theater again. But Howard thought the sounds were not from a movie. Soon he wanted to go home, and when he went into the living room, he saw blood on the floor. Then Deborah's father came saying, Daughter, I didn't know you had guests today, and gave Howard a suspicious look. Now he is sure he witnessed a crime and is afraid to go home and to school. I called Phil immediately and warned him I'd come with Howard. Don't worry, they are trustworthy. Mr. Diaz said that if there indeed was a murder in the living room, Howard was in grave danger. The only way was to become a bait and expose them all. It took a long time for Howard to agree and at one moment he even cried in fear. Brace yourself, you are a man after all. Mr. Diaz will be near and if you refuse, no one can save you. 
Howard went to school with a secret camera in his jacket. Deborah was so nice to him, flirting all right. Then she offered him to go to a forest for a picnic after classes. Oh no, Howard, don't show your fear. He agreed and even embraced her and said he'd been dreaming about it for a long time. Well done! Love her alertness. During the picnic, Deborah was feeding him strawberries and joked much. This lasted for hours. Hmm, could that be just a picnic after all? But then we heard noises. Right in front of Howard, there appeared a figure wearing a black mask. Hurry, Mr. Diaz, let's go! Hurry, we must be on time! We were almost there when we heard a scream. In a moment, Phil's dad attacked the bandit, cuffed him and pulled his mask off. We were all astounded. Mr. Taylor, the school principal? Deborah rushed to the forest. Hell no, dear, you are not going anywhere. Too long have I been waiting for this. We took them both to the police. Howard's camera had recorded everything. They'd not sleep away. Soon the principal confessed working for Deborah's family for years. He spoke of the other crimes too, to have the mercy of the court. Mr. Diaz was soon awarded, jumped two ranks and returned to the major crimes department. And Phil and I were invited to study in a police academy. We decided to do it. Howard wanted to date me like before. What? You've betrayed me twice already. And there will be the third time just as another wealthy wench appears. You are no match for Phil, who's brave and reliable. The folks from my former class respect me even more now, but I couldn't care less. The truth is not always accepted right away, but what's important is that everything unravels sooner or later. Did you like the video? Subscribe and give us a like. Support our channel. Thank you. Ran through the dark forest with the last of my strength. Am I lost? I can feel someone watching me from behind the trees. These creatures will find me. It all started when my parents sent me to a summer camp a month ago. I expected to find friends quickly, but by the end of the first day, everyone was divided into groups and no one noticed me. Even in the locker room, I was left alone. The other girls quickly showered, changed, and ran to the bedrooms. I was about to turn off the light when I saw a device hanging from the ceiling. Camera? This is the women's locker room. Who's watching us? I decided that I should urgently go to the administration and tell them about it. If there's a pervert among us, I don't want to deal with him. The administration building was pretty far, so I decided to cut through the woods. I shivered at every sound as I made my way through the dark woods. I kept running around, but there was only darkness behind me. Suddenly, someone grabbed my arm tightly. I screamed in fear, but they closed my mouth. Be quiet. An elderly couple stood in front of me. The old man said in an alarmed voice that this was their camera and asked them not to report it. A year ago, one of the girls at the camp kidnapped her daughter, Beth. The police couldn't help, so now they have to search for her themselves. The woman took out her daughter's crumpled photo. The winner of a beauty contest. They really loved her. Not like my parents. They would have been relieved if I was kidnapped. Then the missing girl's father begged for help. The woman softly sobbed. The father gave me a hairband. The only piece of evidence the police found. But forensics couldn't determine whose it was. It had too many prints. Betty's mother looked at me hopefully. I hesitated for a moment, but still. We heard distant voices. The old man and woman got nervous. They handed me a piece of paper with a number on it and disappeared. There was no more time to talk. I peered into the darkness to see if I was imagining it. My parents called me in the morning. They pretended to be worried. Said they were missing me, but I quickly turned it down. I wouldn't be here if they really loved me. Like that's mother and father. I must help them. Our team was preparing for a volleyball match. Everyone gathered in the locker room. I didn't like sports, but this was a chance to find out who owned that rubber band. I pretended to find it on the floor of the locker room and asked whose it was. The new girl responded. When did she arrive? The girl took the rubber band and said her name was Sandy and haughtily added that it was a shame not to know the captain of her volleyball team. I didn't like her right away. She will definitely stop at nothing to be the first. I told Sandy I wanted to be a forward on her team and lied about being a volleyball player. Sports aren't my strong suit. As a result, I disgraced myself at the game. We lost and literally got swept. Sandy was furious about losing. She called me a sucker and pushed me. I got enough from upstarts like her at school. But now I know for sure that Sandy is dangerous. She can't control herself.
After the game, I immediately called the missing Betty's parents and told them about Sandy. Watch her was all I could make out through the static. This Sandy had a finger in every pie. She was the smartest, sportiest, and prettiest. Not surprisingly, she also won a beauty contest held at the summer camp. The jury was told that they finally have another winner. And Sandy enigmatically grinned. I thought it was weird. What do they mean by finally changed? I decided to sneak behind the stage. I crouched behind the screen and waited for Sandy to say something to her friends. The girls congratulated her on her victory. It turned out that she had been second for several years. Now that Stinker isn't here, Sandy said about the previous winner and won't be here ever again. Oh my god, what if she's talking about missing Betty? Because that photo of her was at a beauty contest. Sandy couldn't stand the competition and got her out of the way. That's motive. I backed away in shock and knocked the screen down. Heck, I tried to run away, but I tripped. During that time, Sandy's quad caught up with me. I thought this was the end. Sandy pushed me to the wall. Mind your own business, okay? They threw me out the door, but I wasn't ready to give up. Sandy definitely knew something about Betty. But now I needed more evidence. In the evening, after the contest, I noticed that Sandy didn't go to her building, but turned into the woods. I had to go after her, even though my knees were shaking with fear. Sandy was walking toward the thicket with a shovel in her hand, and sometimes she'd stop and look around. What did she want in the woods in the dark? Suddenly, the phone rang. Parents! Heck! Always not the right time. I quickly dropped the call. I wish Sandy hadn't heard. But the sound was too loud. Sandy looked back and started walking toward the bushes where I was sitting. She was so close, my heart stopped. If she sees me, she'll kill me for sure. But I was lucky. Finding nothing, Sandy returned to the clearing, and judging by the sounds, began to dig. I watched her carefully from behind the bushes. She seemed in a hurry. Sandy looked around again and took a small bundle from under her jacket, tossed it into the hole, and quickly buried it. What are you hiding, Sandy? I waited for her to leave and called Betty's parents. I had to tell them what I'd seen. I could hear the beeps, but no one answered. I'll have to do it myself. I forced myself to go to the place where Sandy had buried the bundle. I raked the dirt with my bare hands and pulled out. The bloodstained clothes. Oh my god. What does that mean? Did Sandy torture that girl? Or maybe she... In fright, I threw things on the ground and ran away. I wanted to get out of this camp forever. But what am I going to tell Betty's parents? I saw these things in blood. The next morning, I called the missing Betty's parents again. The number is temporarily out of service. The answering machine said, What if something happened to them too? I shouldn't have told them about Sandy. Now they might be in danger. And only I can help them. I decided to talk to her in a good way and let her admit everything. She was always accompanied by her girl squad and pretended I didn't exist. During dinner, I decided to approach her. You know, I saw something last night. I started, but Sandy interrupted me and said she didn't care what I saw. Well, Sandy, if you don't want to be nice, you've asked for it. I got a shovel from the back room and stood guard outside Sandy's room. I was lucky to find her without an entourage. You'll have to come with me. Hell no, Sandy said, but I threatened her with the shovel and dragged her into the woods. Every step I took, I became bolder, even more desperate. When Sandy tried to run away, I tripped her and she fell to the ground. She'll know how to mess with me. When we reached the pit, I stuck my shovel on the ground and definitely looked at Sandy. I know what you did. You're the one who kidnapped that girl. What girl? Said Sandy. I told her about Beth's disappearance and told her not to deny it. I have all the evidence on my hands. The rubber band, the beauty contest that she was prevented from winning, the bloodstained things in the woods. You must have seen too much Hooten at films, right? Sandy said nervously. She said she just liked the hairband. So she lied about it being hers. The competition was previously won by the camp director's daughter, and now she's too old to come here. And there is no blood on the things. She smeared everything with paint to scare the younger teams. Sandy's words sounded plausible. But why should I believe her? Tell that to Beth's poor parents, I said, and pointedly look at the shovel to scare Sandy. Suddenly, Sandy thought about it, and she said the story seemed very familiar to her. 
and continued. There is a camp legend about an old couple from the forest. They're looking for their daughter's killer. And each time they come back to take a new girl with them. What nonsense! I said they were stories for babies, but Sandy didn't seem to hear me. Startled, she looked into the thicket and backed away. It's not a legend! She yelled. Where's she looking? I turned to see an old couple standing behind me. Their eyes eerily glowed in the dark. My god! I ran as fast as I could toward the camp. Terrified, I ran to the buildings and turned around. The creatures were coming fast. Their eyes burned. I slammed the building door in their faces and rushed to my room on the second floor. I was packing my things when I heard a rattle. When I turned around, I saw their ugly faces. They tried to get in through the open window. I grabbed my phone and ran through the service exit straight into the woods. I don't know how long I ran, but suddenly I came to a clearing. There were guys from junior team sitting by the fire. Their camp counselor was telling a story that it's forbidden to go to the forest at night. They will live an old man and an old woman. They search for girls who look like their daughter and take them into the darkness. The poor thing who fell into their clutches will never get out of this camp. I ran to the counselor. Help! But he didn't notice me. No one noticed. Hey, I'm here! The old man and the old woman were getting closer, but I ran to the bloody camp again. Someone please save me! In a panic, I dialed my real parents' number. Subscriber unavailable. The last thing I remember is a terrible rattle coming from behind me. I hope my parents don't forget me. I opened my eyes. It was sunny and pleasant outside. Couldn't help but smile. Stop! How I ended up in my room when, thank god it was just a dream. When I realized this, I remember that I had a big fight with my parents the day before. I wanted to apologize to them. I thought. I went down to the dining room where we usually have breakfast. I didn't know what to say. When I saw my parents, I just started crying. Mom and dad ran up to me and started uneasily asking what happened. All I could say in response was that I was fine. Everything is fine as long as my parents are with me. And I hugged them tight.